In this tutorial, we're going to show you seven different ways to use masks and frames with Craft Artist. We're using the professional version of the software for all of these effects, available from daisytrail.com. We'll take you through the basics of using photo frames, all the way to the more complicated techniques, like using masks. The first technique I'm going to show you is how to use a standard photo frame. This couldn't be easier. Choose a frame from the Digikit browser by clicking on it, and then drag it onto your page. Now, simply drag your photo onto the frame and it will snap straight in. You can move it around using the crop tool. The second tip is how to use masked photo frames. To demonstrate this, I'm going to use frames from the Graphic Authority Edge Library available at Daisy Trail. These frames are absolutely fab because they allow you to make some truly creative artwork without having to spend hours learning tools in a software programme. I'm starting off with a layout and I'm ready to add my photo. First, I'm going to drag one of the Graphic Authority frames onto my page and resize it. You'll notice when you pick the frame up that you can see a black rectangular edge all the way round it. The way these frames work is to apply an erase blend mode around your photograph to give it the desired effect. So, when you add a photograph into the frame, the edge will be erased to match the frame design. Our third tip is how to use the Graphic Authority frames with items underneath. One of the side effects of having an erase blend mode on these frames is that the frame will erase anything beneath it or on the same layer, in exactly the same way that the Craft Artist blend modes work. In most cases, you'll be able to see the background paper underneath the rectangular outline of the frame. To counteract this, there are two simple solutions. The first is to put your frame onto a new layer. The second way is to convert your frame to a bitmap. Simply select your frame, go to Tools, and click Convert to Bitmap. Before you convert to a bitmap, make sure you apply any effects you want to your photo and place it as you want it in the frame. The fourth tip I want to show you is how to use the Photo Lab to apply a mask. You might want to do this if, for example, you want to keep part of a photo in colour and the other part in black and white. First, we add a photo to our page. With this photo, I want to keep the jumper and socks in colour and the rest in black and white. Open the Photo Lab and apply a black and white effect to the whole photo. Commit to the filter so it's no longer in a trial zone. Next, we need to add our mask. This works in essentially the same way as the Cutout Studio, but in this case, you're telling craft artists which section of the photo you'd like to apply the effect to and which section you'd like to protect from it. Click on the mask button and choose new mask. You'll notice that you now have a paintbrush. Use this to paint over the area you'd like to keep in colour. By default, the mask is set to keep whatever you paint onto. Don't worry if you go wrong. Choose the discard brush instead and remove the mistaken selection. There are further instructions on how to use the masks in the help. Once you're happy, choose Protect and then click the Accept button. You can go back in and edit your mask at any time. Tip number five will show you how to layer up frames. Have you ever wanted to add more than one effect to your photo, but don't know how to? For example, apply a distressed look to your photo, but also have it creased? Well, let me show you how. I've got a photo in a Graphic Authority distressed edge frame. I've added a mask layer to the photo using the same technique as tip four. So I can keep the bride and groom in color and the rest of the photo in sepia. Now, I'll convert this to a bitmap so I can add another frame on top. I've now added a second frame to my photo, and you can already see how layering up effects and layers can look nice. Let's take it a bit further. 
If I convert this to a bitmap again, I can add another frame on top. This time I'll use a creased paper overlay to make my photo look old. I'm really happy with how this looks now, so I'll add it onto my scrapbook page. Have a go at layering up frames for yourself to see what you can create. Just remember to convert to a bitmap each time you want to add another effect. The next tip will teach you how to apply frame effects to material and background papers. This can be really handy if you want to create your own distressed background paper. Start with background paper on your page. Now we'll select it from the background layer and drag a Polaroid frame over the top. If we now convert this to a bitmap, we can add another frame on top to make it distressed. On the next layer, add a piece of material and convert it to a bitmap. Now add a frame over the top. Now add another frame and your photo. I'm going to convert this photo to bitmap so I can apply another distressed frame on top. Once I've added the distressed look to my photo, I'll convert to a bitmap again. As you can see, in this way you can build up a page adding layer after layer of effects to create a really beautiful end result. The seventh and final tip we have to show you today is how to apply a mask layer in Craft Artist. Masks are fantastic tools for your scrapbook layouts in particular. You can create some really stunning effects. To demonstrate this, I'm going to use this picture of a Jaguar. My Jaguar is sitting on layer 1. I'm going to add a mask layer by clicking the mask layer button on the right hand side. Now my Jaguar picture is on the layer below, masked by my new layer. Anything you put on the new layer mask will unmask the items directly below it. I'm going to use the brush tool to paint over part of my picture to reveal the Jaguar below. If you want to add other items to your page, add another layer on the right and they won't be masked. We hope you've enjoyed this video tutorial. You can find out loads more tips and tricks at daisytrail.com.